Hi, I'm Lynn Cornell, and welcome to Journey Through the Bible Verse by Verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study through each book of the Bible, verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Keep in mind that I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're reading from a different Bible translation, the read will be different, but the message will be the same. Okay, we're going to continue in our study in the Gospel of Matthew, and we're in chapter 8. Verse 1 says, When he came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Now this is coming right off of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, you know. So, um, right, verse 2, right away, a man with a serious skin disease came up and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, other translations use the word leprosy, pretty much every other one. So, I don't know why the Holman Christian Standard Bible uses skin disease. I like this translation. It is, I think it's a great reading and study translation. So, I, 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 so why they use this term, I don't know. But it, it means leprosy. So every time we're going to really see the term skin disease is referring to leprosy. Verse 3. Reaching out his hand, he touched him saying, I am willing, be made clean. Immediately his disease was healed. Then Jesus told him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed as a testimony to them. Now, a couple of things. One, and this is one of the things that's kind of comforting that Jesus said I am willing and I haven't really found anywhere in scripture where Jesus was never willing or not willing to heal now leprosy was such a dreadful disease back then it was the um, AIDS or herpes really you can say this it wasn't so much as a terminal disease although you could die from it as much as it was incurable and it was a miserable disease, it was a skin rotting disease. But it was so rot your it, it was so rot into your your skin and your flesh that in some cases people would be missing their limbs, fingers, hands, things like that, half an arm. That's how bad this disease is. And it was highly contagible. You can you know, you can by giving someone you, you could catch leprosy by hugging someone and it was just highly contagious. So this man, to be healed by this was such a uh, relief for this man. Now, Jesus, when Jesus would tell the man, you know, don't tell anyone, he wasn't trying to say, keep this a secret just between me and you. Because if you knew this man, and, 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 and Matthew prefaces by saying he had a serious skin disease, meaning he probably was so, he was full of leprosy, that... If you if you got healed, you couldn't hide it. How, how could you hide it? And so, the, but the point that Jesus sometimes was trying to make was that by going out and broadcasting the healing, that it, it would sometimes prematurely spoil his immediate plans, and so sometimes he would have to leave because of the crowd. So, uh, that's some of the reasons why sometimes he would tell people just don't broadcast it. Now, he also told him to offer the gift that Moses prescribed of the testimony. And so even though Jesus is a fulfillment of the law, at the present moment, he wasn't. And so he would always keep, you know, uh, in accordance with the law. Uh, verse 5 says, When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible agony. I will come and heal him, he told him. Lord, I'm... Lord the centurion replied, I'm not worthy to, to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be cured. For I too am a man under authority. Having soldiers under my command, I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another one, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and said to those that follow him, I assure you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great faith. Now, Jesus only said this one other time, and it's interesting that in both cases where Jesus commended the people for great faith, that they were not Jews. That he said, I've not found this in Israel, but it was people outside of Israel that he said that with great faith, that they had such great faith in him. Um... Verse 11, I tell you that many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into outer darkness. 
in the place where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, we're getting into the whole eternal damnation thing. Keep in mind, at this point, that the, again, what is consistent throughout all scriptures, that the reason for the damnation or separation is the rejection of, pe uh, of, of Jesus, the rejection of the Messiah. And so he tells them that the sons of the kingdom, and here is the, really the sons of the kingdom here refer to the, the Jewish people, that they're rejecting the Messiah. All right, verse 13 then, um, then Jesus told the centurion, Go, and as you have believed, let it be done for you. And his servant was cured from that very moment. Now again, um, uh, later we're going to find that the centurion himself didn't even come, but he sent representative. And that's, going, that's interesting. Uh, verse 14, And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying on the bed with a fever. And so he touched her hand, and the fever left her. She got up and began to serve him. Now, a couple of things, especially if you're Catholic. Peter was married. Plain and simple. Notice his mother-in-law. Now, we're not given much information on the personal lives of the apostles. Very, very little. And we just don't. So, But in this case, we get a, little, a snapshot here that Peter was married, and that he also had... And his mother-in-law was living with him. And, uh, <laughs> and Jesus healed her. Verse 16. When the evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he drove out the spirit with the word and healed all who were sick. Now, I'll deal with demon possession in an upcoming chapter. Uh, verse 17. So that which was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. He himself took our weaknesses and carried our diseases. Now, in Isaiah 53, there is a prophecy, and this is almost quoted, the prophecy in Isaiah 53, that the healing ministry of Jesus is a fulfillment of that prophecy. And I also believe that this is a promise of healing to us, that we can say, Lord, I'm asking you, I'm trusting you for healing and physical healing. And, and, and not just spiritual healing as some people try to make the application. But here, Matthew makes the direct interpretation of physical healing. All right, verse 18. When Jesus saw a large crowd around him, he, he gave the order to go to the other side of the sea. And the scribe followed him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus told him, Foxes have dens and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, this, don't take this as Jesus being poor, okay? Um, and it since he was poor, if you compare him to where he came from, from heaven, okay? Verse 21, Lord, Lord another his disciple says, let me first go bury my father. Now, but Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Now, this seems kind of cold with Jesus. I'm not going to spend much time here because we'll deal with this in another gospel to, where he kind of really gets into the setting of what's going on right here. But to say the least, um, the man father wasn't dead yet. In other words, he, re you know, he really didn't know when the father was going to die. Um, there was, you know, he might have been sick. Not even necessarily terminal. So, in fact, Jesus is going to even deal with that <laughs> and really, really kind of challenge the excuses they're making. All right. Uh, verse 23. As he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm arose on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he was sleeping. So his disciples came and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? Oh, you little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. Then the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? So now, what is interesting about this story is, remember the waves is coming in and the boat is rocking. Jesus gets up and he rebukes their faith before he calms the, the wind. Now, all of this too, by the way, again, is repeatedly, constantly showing that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Verse 28, when he had come to the other side of the sea, 
of the region of the Gardenias. Uh, two demons possessed men met him as they came out of the tombs. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What do you have to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a long ways off from a large, there was a large herd of pigs that were feeding. If you drive us out, the demons begged him, send us to the herd of pigs. Go, he told them. So they, and when they had come out of him, so when they had come out, they entered the pigs and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. Then the men who tended, the, tended them fled. They went into the city and reported everything, especially what had happened to those who were demon-possessed. At that, the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Now, this story is sort of told um, in, 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 in really all uh, three of these, the, the Gospels. And what this kind of shows about this kind of demon possession is, one, demon possession is real. Jesus believed in demon possession, and that this wasn't epilepsy, seizures, and things like that. Notice, because notice this one that Jesus is not healing epilepsy. He does heal epilepsy. He heals uh, all manner of diseases. Now, when it comes to demon possession, he casts the devil out. Now, I would also say about this particular demon possession because. There is sort of a range of severity. And this particular one was a severe case where the, the guy was out of control and couldn't be controlled. He just was kind of, you know, just uh, uh, roaming around in the tombs naked. What is interesting here, and and, and, and by the way, I, I just can't kind of resist it here. Whenever you see these movies like on the exorcist and these demon possession movies and stuff, you always see how... Hollywood chooses to show that the demons are so powerful that even the, 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 the priests, they slap the priests around and all that. And notice that these demons were terrified of Jesus. They were terrified of Jesus. So think about that for a moment. Um, James would say this, that the devils not only believe, but they tremble. So it was a, quite a contrast <laughs> Uh, for what you see in Hollywood than here. Another thing is, notice that Jesus believed in it. And notice that, this, again, we're talking about a spiritual activity here. Because when Jesus cast the devils out, uh, there was this herd of 2,000 pigs. And by the way, we could ask the question, why were you herding, uh, corralling pigs in Israel? That was a no-no. And so you had this herd of 2,000 pigs. and kind of shows you how possessed this man was that when the pigs, when, he, when, when the, uh, uh, the demons were cast out and they entered the pigs, 2,000 of the pigs now were uh, possessed and they stormed and stampeded into, the, into the, 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 the water and drowned. And the people, by the way, of the town were so terrified of that. They said, wow, and they, and, and they were struck with fear. Now it's kind of interesting their reaction, that, you know, that they said, "Just go away from us." Yeah, and and we're going to see in one case, uh, one of the gospel versions when when Jesus would demonstrate his power. This is at the beginning that Peter would say, "Lord, get away from me! I'm a sinful man." There's always an awe. We're sinful beings, and there's always an awe. Shrieking before God, and that when you really come into the presence of God, you're not going to be hardy. You're not going to be like some people. I'm mad at God. No, okay, you may be mad at God now, but if you really, really come into the presence of God, you're, you're going to be struck with awe, fear, and so. And notice Jesus just left, but He set that man free. So. And he had, by the way, he, uh, if we get into the other gospel, he has a very great testimony. He's going to beg Jesus to be with him. Jesus said, now you're going to your friends. All right, we'll pick up with chapter 9 in the next verse, next, next time, next video. All right, see you then.